Today we are discussing India Thailand relationship in the backdrop of the fact that external affairs minister Dr S Jay Shankar visited Thailand and both countries held bilateral talks and many key bilateral issues were discussed Thailand is also a key member of the 10 nation ASEAN bloc which is very influential in the Asian continent Ambassador Tyal when you see this visit and we also look at the context of the India Thailand relationship how significant is this visit by the external affairs minister visit is very significant a ninth session of the India Thailand joint commission Uh, took place when uh, external affairs minister Sri Jayashankar was in Bangkok and if we go back in his see that there was a very strong cultural and civilizational connection of India with the entire southeast asia and particularly with thailand at uh, about 1000 1500 years back uh, most of uh, thailand was uh, or thai people were hindus and now they are mostly buddhist and uh, the, our listeners will be happy to know that their uh, king the present king is called rama 10 and the previous king was rama 9 and his formal name was homi bol adulya tej adulya tej is just a apabhansha of atulya tej so there is a very good civilizational connection and if we look at contemporary thailand thailand of today it is a very important member of 10 member asean it is the second largest economy in asean as well as second largest in the greater mekong sub region and as india focuses on act east policy connecting with southeast asia the importance of thailand is very great if we look at the map the geography of thailand is such that it is a bridge along with myanmar for india's connection with southeast asia ambassador tyal as you pointed out there is this shared religious and cultural relationship which is a very old relationship between india and thailand we also saw that the external affairs minister he offered prayers uh, in the ramen office of the royal court he also visited the temple of the buddhist temple and uh, he also pointed out to the fact that uh, the external affairs minister tweeted wednesday that a contemporary partnership with thailand draws so much from history and culture would you say that the fact that there is a shared cultural past there is a historical a past which both countries share do you feel that somehow that helps in taking the present bilateral relationship forward and in making it stronger it does as we have seen not only with thailand with laos with cambodia with indonesia where there is a strong cultural and civilizational connection mainly through hinduism or uh, buddhism in fact in thailand in bangkok there is a very large and very prosperous community of uh, six and they are doing very well economically and contributing to thailand's economic success so this connection is there and some strategic thinkers some philosophers they sometimes say that southeast asia is really seeing influence from two sides one is the chinese confucianist influence and the other is the indian civilizational buddhist influence and it is very important that india leverages its uh, buddhist and civilizational connection so that the people of not only thailand but entire southeast asia look at india in a more deeper sense not just a transactional sense of how much aid or how much commerce is between their country and india as to tell we also saw that trade was one of the issues that was talked between the two nations and dr s jayashankar he also said that bilateral trade trade between india and thailand is close to 15 billion dollars and this will increase he also said that we are looking at enhancing trade through the india myanmar thailand trilateral 
so uh, this india myanmar thailand trilateral which is which is something we have been discussing for a while how far do you think the fact that india has also been pushing for its early completion and expansion how far do you think does this take india's outreach to southeast asia forward and how do you see this project moving forward there are two aspects of your question one is regarding commerce trade and the other is regarding connectivity now on trade as all our listeners recall in 2019 india did not sign the regional comprehensive economic partnership which was pioneered by asean and for very good reason because our market would have been inundated by cheaper chinese goods so it is important that india strengthens trade and commercial relations investment relations with important economies of asean bilaterally and that is exactly what is being done there is a fta india asean fta which allows the reduction of duties for exports of the two countries to each other and the trade is already has crossed 12 billion dollars and perhaps this year it will be dollar 14 billion and very important aspect of our engagement with these more mature and advanced economies of southeast asia is that india wants to be part of the manufacturing value chain which where these countries whether it is malaysia thailand indonesia philippines singapore they are heavily involved and india is not so active and we need cooperation and partnerships with all the countries of asean particularly of manufacturing hubs like thailand and malaysia so that our effort towards atmanirbhar bharat as well as to increase exports by participating in the manufacturing value chain increases and the second part about connectivity i am afraid it is not looking very optimistic because the trilateral highway which is 1360 km starts from more manipur uh, thailand border goes to mandalay in uh, myanmar then uh, yangon and then to mysot in thailand and because of the internal political situation in myanmar and the very strong uh, military regime which has put respected aung san suu kyi their former leader into jail the working of international agencies international groups to help myanmar has become very difficult in the road in part of the trilateral highway which passes through myanmar there are 69 bridges to be constructed india is trying to help in constructing those bridges and about 150 kilometers of, of road but it would be better if countries like south korea japan asian development bank etc help uh, myanmar in constructing these roads but because of the difficult internal situation in myanmar these countries are not coming forward so a realistic assessment would be that trilateral highway would still take uh, some time to be completed mr tell you also mentioned rcep and the fact that india stayed out of it but we also find that this gives china quite a significant role when it comes to the region how do you think one india manages the chinese influence in the region and do you feel that there is a sense that india always has also to compete with the chinese influence whether it is in our neighborhood or whether we go to southeast asia and we look at countries like thailand philippines and others if we look at our neighborhood and also towards the southeast asia then it is a fact that china's footprint in these countries is increasing the total trade between china and the 10 countries of asean is about 650 million us dollars and our total trade with all the 10 countries of asean is about 100 billion us dollars similarly there is a great disparity in the chinese investments in these countries also china has a proximity to these asean countries through mekong river as well as physical connectivity 
so in my view it will not be a correct approach for india to really try to compete with china in southeast asia in east asia it may be more practical that we work with our partners like united states japan republic of korea australia and try to together see that southeast asia remains strategically autonomous and has full strategic autonomy and it does not come under chinese pressure and influence which unfortunately we have seen in the south china sea that how china has defied the collective will of the southeast asian countries of the members of asean and has militarized islands uninhabited islands it has also tried to intimidate philippines and has occupied the maritime features which rightfully belong to philippines they also belong to vietnam some of them and even to malaysia some natuna island china is, which is under the sovereign um, territorial maritime territory jurisdiction of indonesia there also china is trying to make inroads so there is a lot of pressure from china all southeast asia and india should work together with other democracies so that the pressure can be repelled by the collective will of 10 asean members we see that thailand is not just a strategic partner of india in the region and bilateral ties we also see that there is an upswing when it comes to defense and security ties with thailand with these comments we bring today's discussion to an end thank, thank you thank you